Welcome to our review on aseptic technique. First thing that we need to know is what is aseptic technique? And quite simply, this is the technique that we use to prevent foreign microorganisms from being introduced into our test sample as a contaminant. So what we're actually doing here is we're ensuring that all of the apparatus and the environment that we're carrying out our experiment in remains sterile. So there are a few different steps that we can actually take to ensure that we achieve this aseptic technique. First one is that we will wash any of our working areas with alcohol before and after the work we're carrying out. The whole idea behind that is to ensure that no microorganisms are present within the working area during our actual procedure. Secondly, wearing gloves. So the whole idea behind this is to prevent microorganisms passing from a sample onto the skin. Thirdly, we will autoclave glassware and the apparatus before and after use. The whole idea behind that is it's going to sterilise our apparatus and prevent any contamination of our sample. And then lastly, we're going to work close to a Bunsen burner flame. And again, this means that we're not going to get any unwanted microorganisms falling into the open sample as we're working from the air. A key piece of equipment that we use when transferring microbiological samples from one place to another is that we use a wire loop. So what we're actually going to be doing there is we'll move it from one medium to a different one using this wire loop. That has to be sterilized when we're using it. So we need to make sure there's nothing on it before we dip it into our sample. And we need to make sure that our sample's not left on it after we finished using it as well. So the way that we achieve this is that we're going to heat it in a Bunsen flame until it glows red hot. We will then hold it close to the Bunsen flame away from the bench to let it cool down because you obviously don't want to stick it red hot into your sample because otherwise there's not going to be a whole lot living after you've just doused it with a red hot metal. So you keep it in the air away from the bench because you don't want anything off the bench to come into contact with your loop after you've sterilized it and just out of the Bunsen flame so it will cool down but nothing from the air comes into contact with it. One of the key techniques that we use to actually identify bacterial colonies is we'll produce something called a streak plate to separate them out into singular colonies. So to carry this out we start off with our sample and we need to sterilize the loop that we're going to use to take a small amount of it. So you hold the loop in the Bunsen flame while it glows red hot to kill anything on it, hold it just out of the Bunsen flame to let it cool down. You then take your sample from your original pot and onto an agar plate, you then make four to five streaks across one edge. You then have to flame the loop again, heating up to red hot, letting it cool, etc., to kill off anything that's still on there. You then turn the plate and then you make four to five new streaks down the next side. Flame the loop again, then again, four to five streaks down the next side. Flame the loop again, four to five streaks down that last side making sure that you don't join it back together with your original streaks. The idea is not just to make a little box made out of bacteria on the plate, unlike some people on my degree course did. The idea here is that each time that you streak across and reflame your loop, then you're spreading the bacteria thinner. So that eventually, once it's been incubated and you take it out, you will have individual colonies that you can then select. Once you've actually separated out the bacteria into an individual colony, then we can actually start the identification process by looking at those colonies. So the shape, the color, the edge that they've got, their surface appearance, how elevated they are, all of those can give us an idea about what type of bacteria we've got. And then just to clarify which type of bacteria is present, we can use other chemical tests to actually confirmed what we think is accurate. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now define the term aseptic technique, you can describe how to perform aseptic technique and also describe how to isolate bacterial colonies for identification using a streak plate.